The Eastern Cape province of South Africa is home to the Kosa people, one of the nation's largest tribes. The Kosa live in the modern world, but they maintain ancient customs, including one by which boys become men. It's a rite of passage that starts with pain. Every summer, boys are circumcised, painted white, and isolated in remote huts where they spend weeks healing. Always a difficult and dangerous experience, the tradition has become even more so here in the city. Initiates crowd into all available space. Hygiene is poor and infection is common. Some Kosa boys die trying to become men. The Mahove family is sending one of its own on the journey to manhood. Tondo is enjoying his last day as a boy. I'm worried about the pain and I'm worrying like uh, something is not going so well because I hear a lot of guys go to hospital. The whole Kosa community will participate in this rite of passage. The men load up materials to build Tondo a hut in the bush. His family chose an isolated site at the outskirts of town. Distracted by the hut construction, Tondo doesn't notice that the surgeon has arrived. Traditional surgeons have no formal training, but some have more skill than others. There will be no ceremony before the circumcision. It comes with the speed of an ambush. Without warning, the surgeon steps forward to remove Tondo's foreskin. Ignoring the pain, Tondo shouts out he is now a man. Kosa tradition holds that foreskins must be buried to keep sorcerers from using them in witchcraft. The surgeon is also careful to clean the blade to reduce the risk of transmitting diseases such as AIDS. I'm so dizzy. I'm so dizzy. When the hut is ready, he'll be left here alone for weeks. Now the real danger of Tondo's initiation begins. In the coming weeks, he faces the risk of infection, even gangrene. And until he's healed, he can eat no fresh food and drink no water. The initiates must not drink water because the water comes out of the penis and makes the wound wet so it doesn't heal properly. Should infection strike, he'll have to choose between getting care and remaining true to his tribe. If he seeks medical attention, the Kosa will never accept him as a man. The white clay paint marks Tondo as an initiate. He'll wear it throughout his transition. But right now, his mind is on water, which he is forbidden to drink. Sometimes initiates face dehydration so severe it can sicken or even kill. Tondo is allowed to sustain himself with only a liquid made from corn. After a week, Tondo is well enough to drink water, and he's allowed to visit with other initiates whose huts are nearby. Their experiences here in the bush will bind them together in the Kosa community. One month after Tondo left, the men make one last trip to his hut. Gone is the white clay paint of a boy. Now Tondo undergoes a centuries-old custom, a coating of fat. But instead of the animal fat his ancestors used, he's anointed with margarine from the supermarket. The entire community gathers to celebrate his return. Everyone escorts him home. Neighbors join the throng. His achievement is their achievement. By respecting tradition and prevailing over hardship, Tondo has proven himself a man. Red clay marks his new status. He is now eligible for marriage and other rights of adulthood. He has earned his place in the Kosa Nation. <laughs> <laughs>